Okay, in this video what we're going to do is we're going to look at the pressure reducing valve and I've zoomed in to just so show part of the trainer so you can see the gauges just a little bit better. But again, even with, with every hydraulic device, you have to trust your schematic diagram. Okay, and you can see the schematic diagram for the pressure reducing valve. It has two very unique features that are that most other uh, pressure control valves don't have, uh, and that is one: they're normally open. Okay, this is very unique. They're the only they're the, the only common pressure control valve that is normally open. The other thing is is that it sent its internal pilot line is being sensed at the output, not the input. So schematically, it makes it a little bit different. Okay, and since your output port is going to a pressurized side of the system, it's, you know, it's not going back to tank, you have to have what's called an external drain line, okay? And uh, you can see that here in the schematic diagram. So let's go ahead and hook this up and you guys can see how this operates. So we're gonna go from our pump, okay, to our input of the pressure reducing valve. Now on this cartridge valve, two is my input, one is my output. Three is my external drain. And I know you can't see it on the video, but there's a two, a one, and a three scratched into these. So my pressure is going to come into here. And then from there, I'm going to come to my output and I'm just gonna hook this up to a gauge just so I can prove that it works first. So now I'm going to a gauge here and I have to hook up my external drain line. So my external drain line always needs to go to tank unimpeded, just through a hose going right back to tank. All right, so now this is a, the most basic pressure reducing circuit that you can have. Now I'm gonna turn it on, all right? And I wanna start with this all the way out. So I turn it on. All right, now you can see my pump pressure is at 800 PSI, okay? And my oil coming down to here is basically zero. Now the reason that they're, you know, 50 or 60 PSI. Now, as I start to turn this down, okay, as I start to compress that biasing spring, you're gonna see that the pressure here is gonna go up, okay? And I can adjust the pressure to here, to wherever it's going. In this case, it's just going to a gauge, so I can adjust the pressure as need be. Now, some people underestimate the importance of this external drain line, but let me show you what happens if this external drain line is not hooked up. Now, um, this one right here, this external drain line, this has a uh, quick disconnect, which has a check valve, so no oil should come out of here. So it's just like blocking the port. So let me turn it on and let me show you what happens here. This automatically goes up to 800 and I can't adjust it at all. I may be able to turn it, but this is no longer gonna be adjusted. And you, what happens is the oil inside gets that has to go that sneaks in through the where the biasing spring is has nowhere to evacuate this is a pressurized side so what happens is um, the oil doesn't have anywhere to go so you, it's just oil fighting oil at that point and since oil is relatively incompressible it has nowhere to go so i'm going to turn this off okay and uh, what i can do is come back here hook this up to the tank line okay Turn it back on, and now I'm back to my adjustment, where I can come in here and adjust this as need be, up to my max system pressure, which is about 800, all the way down to about 50 PSI, because there's always gonna be some resistance in the line uh, that the pump has to produce just to get the oil back down to flow, okay? Or back down to the tank, sorry. And now, if we wanted to take this to the next level and see where we can use this at, that's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole screen now that we have our pressure reducing valve hooked up. We're gonna hook it up to a directional control valve and you can see how that will control the amount of pressure just coming to here. Okay, I've zoomed out here so we can see a little bit better. I'm gonna take my output port from my pressure reducing valve and I'm going to shift it over to the pressure port 
of my uh, four two directional control valve. All right, and I'll finish hooking this up, and you can follow along with the schematic diagram if you want. Uh, as I do this here, uh, if you haven't seen my other videos, I have other videos showing you how to hook up this, uh, how to hook up the directional control valve based off of the schematics. So what I'm going to do instead of going to a cylinder, I am going to go to a pressure gauge out of each of my ports. And the reason I'm doing this is so you can see max resistance and see how this is going, how the pressure reducing valve is adjusting the pressure for the whole circuit here. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead, I basically have my A and B port going to two uh, pressure control valves. I have my tank port hooked up. My pressure port, instead of coming directly from my pump, it is going to come from my pressure reducing valve, the output of my pressure reducing valve. So let's go ahead and turn this on, and one of these will go up right away to wherever it's set. Okay, so now you can see this one came up just a little bit. I'll come over here, I'll adjust my pressure reducing valve down to let's say 300 PSI. Now the most pressure I can get to this directional control valve is 300 PSI. So I activate it, as it's extending and retracting, it'll go up or down. In this case, I don't have any cylinders going, so as long, just as long as it takes the spool to shift. Now I have 300 coming out of my B port, and I have zero at my A port. Let it go, and it switches. And so if I come over here and I adjust this down to let's say 500, I can activate this switch and it's switching where that goes. And now if I were to hook these up to a cylinder, you would see them extending in retraction and, it, and instead of its max pressure being 800 from the pump, it's only going to be 300 or 500 or whatever I set the reducing valve to when it's fully extended or fully retracted.